Jackie Lambie has been making plenty of headlines this week after taking on One Nation over its opposition to vaccine mandates. Now, the independent senator says Pauline, Hansen, Pauline Hansen's party has put her at risk by sharing her private mobile number on social media. She has the backing of both the Coalition and Labor who are demanding One Nation apologise for that leak. And Senator Lambie joins us now from Canberra. Jackie Lambie, good morning to you. Good morning. Must have been a pretty torrid time for you once your mobile phone went up on social media. How, uh, how sick, how disturbing were some of the messages you got? Uh, they're actually very disturbing, but, you know, I say, what a pack of cowards they are because they, they, they have their no caller ID on. And I think, you know, you, you're actually quite disgusting. So this, this went on all morning yesterday morning. It started to sort of slow down by about 2 o'clock yesterday. I've had that same number for 17 years. I'm obviously going to have to change that now. But really, to actually put something up on social media with my phone number on it, I think that One Nation has hit a whole new low, seriously. This is just disgusting. There is no need for it, Michael. There is heightened tensions out there right now over this whole vaccine and COVID-19 thing. You've seen uh, McGowan out there this morning having to pack, thinking about packing his family up and moving house. You've seen Daniel Andrews under constant threat. Seriously, I mean, honestly, these right-wing nut jobs out there, and there's only a real small amount of them, most of those people that whether they want a vaccine or not or what they believe in, they're good, they're doing the right thing, they're peaceful, they're protesting, that's it. But you've just got this really, really small fringe group out there and quite frankly, you are disgusting. You are really disgusting. Um, and swearing at me and calling me every word for under the sun and that, seriously, are you serious? If you want to say something to me, then put it nice, put it in a sentence, say what you've got to say, but always swearing that, where, where do they think it's going to get them, Michael? Are you worried for your safety? You mentioned those safety concerns. It is, as we all know, a pretty volatile environment. We know the AFP has been giving briefings to, to politicians in Canberra. Are you worried when you go out and about? Um, I don't sort of worry about um, so much in Tasmania. It's, it's pretty quiet down there. But I guess you know that once the borders and that open and you're running around the bigger cities like Sydney uh, and Melbourne and things like that, uh, that could become a problem. You know, it's, it's pretty sad that um, I've got people out there that are crying. They want their freedoms. They want their freedoms. But, you know, you're putting some of us in a situation where we're having to worry about our safety and you now you're going to limit our freedoms. And it shouldn't be like that. It is not the Australian way and it is very uncalled for. It is it's difficult enough up here and being a politician. You know, you do get abuse at times and things like that, but to be smacked down like I was for most of the day yesterday is just disgusting. One Nation at this stage at least, and Malcolm Roberts, this, one of their senators, is refusing to apologise uh, yeah. despite, as we mentioned, Coalition and Labor across the spectrum demanding they, they do that. What, what happens next? What, would, what, what redress do you have if there's no apology coming? Uh, well, what I'll be doing is I'll be putting that on paper and I'll be dressing that in the Senate over the next day or so and we're going to go back to it. I want an apology, not even a phone call. You know, not even a phone call um, from Malcolm Roberts. Uh, it's just disgusting. You did the wrong thing, mate. You put my number up there. It is a really low act in what you've done with the heightened tensions that are going on out there. And quite frankly, you disgust me. OK, now I want to talk more broadly about the, uh, the political situation. You're, you're quite strong in the Senate yesterday attacking the government, saying, in your view, they've pretty much lost their two Tasmanian seats, Bass and Braddon. Uh, it's a bit too early to be calling that, or do you, do you have any special intelligence on that front? Uh, it's just really worrying because I'm, I'm, I'm out there all the time with my boots on the ground, I'll tell you what. And that, that's a very marginal seats, uh, both those seats down there. Um, it'll be very, very interesting uh, to see what happens. I'm obviously running. I've got, I've got runners in those uh, seats as well. Um, so, you know, that, that percentage, most of the time we're on 10 or 15 per cent uh, and that will make a difference, unfortunately. So, um, you know, I, I think, you know, depending on where those votes go uh, after they've voted for me, we'll make a significant difference on who wins those seats and, that, and that's the honest truth of it. So the best thing that those... Uh those candidates, the, the best thing that those members can do is get out there and actually start earning their seats because if they think by spending a load of money down there in Tasmania is going to save them, I've got news for you and it's not good. You may want to get out on the ground a little bit more and talk to the locals because they're not impressed. OK, what are, what are the main issues that would, as you would see, drive the votes of locals in Tasmania, particularly the north of that state? I think they're looking for integrity and they're looking for honesty. And what they're seeing with the government today is a lot of cover-up. Uh, you know, they uh, they won't. They're really looking um, for a, a watchdog over 
over politicians. They're not getting that. We've now waited for over three years for an integrity bill. This is really, really important for people down there. And I, can't, I cannot see why the coalition is not seeing this, that people are judging and saying, basically, and throwing us all in the same pile that we have no integrity. And they're right. They're right. Because everything's a cover-up. They don't want to be honest. You get, you're getting documents back that are all blanked out and um, it's gone too far. This is not a dictatorship. It is a country of freedom. And quite frankly, you need to be honest with the people and they're not feeling that they've been honest to for a very long time. It's just very quickly, I know our time is just about out. If, if the election was fought on trust, and that's certainly what the Labor Party is trying to do, uh, the government in turn accuses Labor of being sneaky by not being upfront with uh, what it's planning to do if it wins government. But if the election was fought on trust, uh, you're seasoned political observer Jackie Lambie. Who's got more to worry, Scott Morrison or Anthony Albanese? I think you'll find that Scott Morrison um, has more to worry about than Anthony Albanese, but Labor could certainly do themselves a favour and um, get their positions and policies out there uh, a lot quicker than what they're doing it right now. I think that would help them. Clarity from all sides is a very welcome. Jackie Lambie, uh, I'm sorry to hear what you're going through. Really appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank you so much for having me on.